Welcome to this Architecture Today CPD webinar, Zinc as a Building Envelope, with our content partner, VM Zinc. We're delighted to have Jonathan Lowy with us, VM Zinc's Operational Marketing Manager. Jonathan has over 23 years experience working with VM Zinc and has operated in both technical and sales positions in three different countries. Jonathan has also been involved in technical certifications, including environmental profile declarations and technical system certifications certifications such as BBA certificates. Before joining VM Zinc, Jonathan worked as a land surveyor in Paris, spending quite a lot of time on the rooftops of Paris, which as we will see were the epicenter of Zinc. Jonathan's knowledge of construction solutions using the unique properties of Zinc is extensive. We'll be taking questions throughout the webinar, so please use the Q&A facility as much as you want. Jonathan, Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, looking forward to this webinar and uh, lots of questions. Uh, as Dave said, there's going to be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of each section. So please uh, jot your questions down and I'll try and answer them. We're presenting today's webinar CPD in four parts with Q&A opportunities after each part concludes. We'll cover roofing systems, build-ups, facade systems, performance and procurement later in the presentation. But we'll start with production and sustainability and a look at the aesthetics of zinc. Welcome to this VM Zinc Reba accredited CPD, Zinc as a Building Envelope. This is what we're going to cover. These buildings all feature Zinc. Greenwich Millennium Village, Boathouse Cambridge University, Islington Housing Association and Ripple Retreat Scotland. This is a satellite image, but of what? An aerial image of Paris. The Arc de Triomphe is in the center. Clearly you can see that the main color from above is gray. That is because most of the roofs in Paris are covered with zinc. 95% of all metal used in Paris for roofing is zinc. The nature of the architecture chosen by Baron Haussmann in the middle of the 19th century combined with the color and availability of zinc made it the ideal material. Much of this architecture required roofs to have a slope of 3 degrees. This is still the minimum slope for zinc roofs as built. Going below this slope greatly increases the chances of water ingress and staining and is not recommended. Paris and St. Bartholomew's Church in Liège. First ever zinc roof fitted in 1809. Zinc ore is relatively common. The richest areas are Peru and Canada, but zinc mines do also exist closer to home in Ireland and Sweden and up until 1949 in the North Pennines. Traces of zinc were even found in the ruins of Pompeii. VM zinc has been produced continuously since 1837. Prior to the 1970s, all zinc sheet produced was mill-finished natural zinc. Furthermore, older zinc had more impurities, such as cadmium. This can sometimes give the zinc a whiter aspect, visible in this photo. Cadmium has been eliminated from zinc for almost 50 years now. Zinc was not only used in the redevelopment of Paris, but was also widely used in the UK for civic buildings, railway stations, King's Cross facade, etc. in the 19th century. However, zinc's use in the UK, unlike in continental Europe, remained quite limited and indeed almost disappeared entirely by 1990. Zinc production and sustainability. Approximately one kilogram of titanium and copper are added to 999 kilograms of special high-grade zinc, EN988, in order to improve the tensile strength and creep resistance of the material. The mixture is heated up in an oven before being hot rolled into a continuous slab. The zinc is then rolled down to the necessary thickness. Zinc used in the UK is usually between 0.7 mm and 1.5 mm. Zinc is a non-toxic element, Zn, and required by all living organisms, an essential element. Due to electrolysis taking place at room temperature, less energy is required to produce zinc than other metals. The BRE Environmental EN15804 gives an expected life of 100 years for a zinc roof. At the end of a life, with limited maintenance, zinc is 100% recyclable. Some recyclable 
Sparkled zinc is then used for roofing applications, but much is also used for galvanizing, brass production, and zinc oxide used in skin creams. The Picton Reading Room Dome, Liverpool, was built in 1879 using zinc. After 133 years, many of the zinc panels were needing to be replaced. However, much of the original open gap boarding was kept due to good design and installation. While the vast majority of the original design was kept, 21st century regulations meant that panel width had to be reduced and standing seams were incorporated between the batten caps. Current corrosion rates are less than 2 microns per year. A sheet of zinc is at least 700 microns thick. Aesthetics of zinc Zinc can be chemically treated to give a wide range of different aspects, but always with a hint of grey. Natural zinc was the only option until 1978. Natural zinc is shiny but forms a patina when it reacts initially with water and then carbon dioxide. After 3 to 10 years, an even middle grey patina is formed, but it takes time for this to become uniform, and many building owners are not that patient. Pre-weathered light grey zinc imitates naturally weathered zinc through a phosphatation process and changes very little over the lifetime of the roof or wall. Whilst pre-weathered light grey zinc is not a painted finish, it is closest to RAL 7037. Examples of light grey pre-weathered zinc, Borough Viaduct, Winchester House, and Seven Oaks School. Pre-weathered dark grey zinc was first created in 1978 as a complementary flashing and gutter material for slate roofs. Its dark grey aspect has made it very popular for both wall cladding and roofing. Zinc would never naturally patina to a finish as dark as this zinc. Whilst pre-weathered dark grey zinc is not a painted finish, it is closest to RAL 7021. Engine Shed Sterling Murphy's Construction HQ, London Pre-weathered zinc can be used in the same way as a natural mill finish zinc, whether it be for roofs, walls, using various techniques, or even gutters. Seen here at Cardiff Point and Bourne Estate, London. Blue, red, green, brown and now grey are pigmented finishes. The mineral pigmented zinc range is not a painted finish. Rather, it is more like looking at light grey pre-weathered zinc through tinted sunglasses. The surface colour is created by adding mineral pigments to a durable pre-weathering, which is then sealed with a protective coating, creating beautifully organic red, green, blue, brown and grey pre-weathered zincs. It can be used for the same applications as natural, light and dark grey pre-weathered zinc. Examples shown, Glasgow Hospital, an architect's office in the USA, and Southampton Hospital. Godson Street in London uses all finishes. Job-specific mineral pigmented finishes are an option when the minimum order is three tons. These colours illustrate some of the possibilities, but bespoke colours are possible. Light grey pre-weathered zinc is the base, so darker colours are best. Bespoke pigmented green. Body Shop brand relaunch. Oxford Street, Bond Street store, global rollout. Engraved zinc combines a mechanical treatment with a chemical treatment and can be used in the same way as all other zinc finishes. Examples include Maxwell Centre Cambridge BDP Architects, Shrewsbury Renovation and Seymour Street by Eric Parry Architects. Engraved zinc can be used in the same way as all other zinc finishes for both roofing and wall cladding. Volks Railway, Brighton, Modular Build and the Maxwell Building in Cambridge by BDP Architects. A metro map of product innovation over 183 years. Some questions coming in. Don't forget you can uh, ask a question at any point during our webinar today. Architecture Today CPD webinar. Zinc as a building envelope with our content partner VM Zinc. And the first question is in, oh incidentally if there's a particular illustration or, or markup that you want to reference then in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you will see the associated slide number. 
please could you give an overview of the fire rating of the various VM zinc cladding buildups, non combustibility through wall ratings, etc., etc., please? Right, well, this is obviously a question that's, that's coming up very frequently. Zinc itself is a, uh, a metal and therefore is non-combustible. So uh, following uh, EN 13501 is A1. By putting certain coatings on it, it can become A2, limited combustibility. Um, now, zinc can be used on pretty much all buildings above 18 meters. The important aspect is what you put the zinc on. Now, if it is a residential building above 18 meters and it's standing seam or flat lock, we'll see this in a little bit more detail, you can put it on uh, a bit later, you can put it on a galvanized steel deck and use a mineral board type insulation, meaning that the whole buildup remains uh, non-combustible or at worst limited combustibility. So it is quite possible to install zinc uh, on walls where non-combustibility is required. Next question is how, incidentally, if you've not used the Q&A facility before, you just need to hover over your screen to reveal the uh, the menu choice and Q&A uh, will pop up for you. Click in it and leave us a question. Um, how long does a zinc roof last? Yes, another, another good question. Uh, the, well, the Liverpool Central Library that we saw uh, was uh, lasted 130 years. To say all zinc roofs and walls will last 130 years might be slightly um, uh, they're asking a lot of it, but the BRE uh, states 100 years, uh, and we would expect at least that. As long as it's designed and installed correctly, uh, zinc will last uh, three to four generations or possibly more um, so uh, a long time there's a couple of questions about pigmented uh, root pigmented finish so what is the predicted lifespan of the pigmented color finish uh, the, the, the 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 pigmento range we we launched that 15 years ago now uh, in the UK the first projects were installed uh, in about 2006 so we've over the last 14 years, we've we've got a real life experience of 14 years, not seeing any change or any visible change at all. We've done accelerated aging, which showed that there was no visible change for at least 30 years. So combining those two, um, where uh, we expect at least 30 years, uh, we don't expect to see any peeling or cracking. There could be a very, very slight fading back to the middle grey, but this would be over decades, so 50 years plus, but um, not, not, certainly not in the first 10 or 20 years we're expecting to see any visible change at all. I think you've sort of half answered the next question because uh, it talks about the colour of anthrazinc uh, and pigmented coatings and, and the possibility of degradation over the life of the application. So you, 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 you may want to expand a little bit, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, Dave. It's, it's, uh, pig, uh, the, the pigmented zinc and anthra are, are, are slightly different in that there's, there's no uh, added pigment or any sort of coating on the anthra. It is purely a chemical treatment and nothing else. Uh, the anthra zinc, uh, uh, as we said, has been around actually since 1978, so 42 years. It will change, but it does depend on the location of, of the, the building. Uh, if you're uh, in, in, a, in a rural area, uh, the, the change will be very, very slight indeed. If you're by the coast, it'll happen a little bit quicker. Zinc and salt actually mix quite well. Salt doesn't corrode zinc very, very quickly at all. It performs very, very well. But uh, if you use a very, very dark product on a seafront, the, the salt in the air will very slightly affect the, the, the natural patina and it will patina back to a middle gray a bit quicker. Now we can, we do have a solution for uh, applying a coating to reduce this. So the, the anthra zinc, if you're in a rural application or in, a, in the middle of the country, uh, sort of Leicester or Birmingham, uh, it's going to change very little. If you're by the sea, a bit quicker. And that's probably something that we should discuss depending on your project. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, moving on to this one. The video mentioned three degrees is the minimum pitch. Is that correct or is it five degrees as I've been recommended? 
Ah, that's a, an, another very good question indeed. Zinc uh, has been installed for almost 200 years at three degrees. What sometimes happens, and, and we, we can understand why, is uh, some uh, contractors are a little bit worried about uh, roofs not being built quite accurately enough. And so they say five degrees, knowing that if there's any error in the build, it will still be above three degrees. The, the actual requirement is three degrees as built. So as long as it's built at three degrees minimum, that is acceptable. If it's three degrees on the drawings and ends up being two degrees for some reason, that's no good. So it has to be three degrees as built. Here's an interesting one. What is white rust on zinc? If the cause is removed, would the corrosion continue? Right, so white, white rust is, uh, we, we, we talked about how the patina forms. There's two stages. Natural zinc reacts with water and forms something called zinc hydroxide and then reacts with carbon dioxide and forms the zinc hydroxycarbonate. We won't get too involved in the chemistry, but the, the, the first stage, zinc hydroxide, is what's sometimes called as white rust. Now, when that comes in contact with air, you don't even see the, the white rust. It, it, it turns into a stable gray uh, compound very, very quickly. If you're in present, if you don't have any air, you can have a problem with white rust. Now, this doesn't often happen on the top surface, or certainly not to any serious extent, but it can happen on the underside. And I think a little bit later in the CBD, we're going to be looking at buildups. So it is quite important to get the buildup right to avoid that exact problem. Do you know which country mainly manufacture zinc roofs? Uh, well, the zinc, uh, the, 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 the biggest producer of, uh, of zinc is, is actually uh, VM Zinc, and our production sites are in uh, France. Uh, we have two rolling mills, one in the uh, south of France, not far from Toulouse, and one in the north, quite close to Lille. Uh, zinc is produced in, in other parts of Europe. It's mainly, there's very little zinc produced outside Europe for um, uh, roofing and wall cladding applications. So the, the majority is produced in Western Europe with, with our production being in France. A compatibility question now, are there any issues with compatibility with other metals, flashings, etc.? I think we'll touch on this a little bit later, but uh, other metals, the big thing to avoid with zinc is copper. Zinc and copper don't get on, and it's fair to say that uh, it's the zinc that loses. Um, uh, as far as other metals, aluminium's fine. Um, Galvanised steel is just steel covered with zinc. Um, stainless steel's fine. So, so all metals are okay with the exception of copper. Uh, there are a few timbers that um, red cedar, you want, wouldn't want to put a red cedar wall directly above a zinc roof or a sweet chestnut, certain things that stain. Core 10, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, uh, core 10 steel stains just about everything, including zinc. So it's fairly easy to, 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 to avoid the things that do stain zinc, but there are a few of them. But copper is definitely the metal to avoid. Uh, finally, for this batch, then, uh, what kinds of insulation are required with zinc facades or roofs? Uh, well, well uh, uh, another good question because it's we, we, we often talk about the whole roof or the whole wall build up. If you're doing a, a ventilated roof or wall, it's it's not critical to the zinc because you're going to have an airspace, as we'll see, between the back of the substrate and the insulation. So the insulation could be uh, a mineral board, it could be a cellular glass, it could be a, a PIR. Uh, it'll probably depend more on your thermal requirements and potentially if it is a building above 18 meters on the fire requirements. For the zinc, it's not actually that important. If you're doing a warm roof, the, the, the requirement is uh, where the zinc is sitting directly on the zinc, the insulation must have a certain density. Uh, it must be rigid. Uh, but for, for cold roofs and walls, you can use really any insulation that you'd like. Marvellous. Um, well, that brings us neatly to the end of the first section. Uh, we've got four um, chances in total for Q&A. So if you think of a question, it doesn't have to relate to the particular section you've just watched. But uh, any questions, Q&A, keep it going. And 
If there's a reference to a particular slide, you'll see the slide number in the bottom right hand corner. So let's continue. Roofing systems. The batten cap system has been used as long as zinc has been fitted. This system can be seen on many roofs in Paris and basically consists of a U-panel fixed against battens, typically 40 millimeters high. A zinc cap batten is then fitted over the timber. This is Bersham Church near Chester. Wallace collection with ornamental pre-weathered light gray profile connecting the zinc batten cap to the slate roofing and traditional mansard south of France. Lord's Cricket Ground. The canopy at the top of the pavilion is a light grey pre-weathered zinc batten cap roof and Poundbury, where zinc was used to create the roofing panels and a number of ornaments. Not only can zinc be stamped, spun and soldered, but its light weight of approximately 7 kilograms per square meter compared to lead at 30 kilograms per square meter makes structures smaller and theft less likely. Standing seam panels have a 25 mm high seam and no timber batten. The panels are very flexible, with nearly all shaped roofs possible in this system. The top photo shows the protective film. All pre-weathered zinc is supplied with protective film, which should only be removed once the roof is complete. The film can remain in place for up to two months, 60 days, but must not be partially removed. Four Seasons Hotel by Eric Parry Architects. Combining standing seam roofing in light and dark pre-weathered zinc. Berkshire House in mineral pigmented brown zinc. Brixton Barrel Vault and Dormer Windows. All of these projects show the geometrical flexibility of zinc and in particular standing seam zinc roofing panels. All of the associated flashings are made from the same respective material. Some of the more complex roof shapes which are achievable with zinc. Zinc, as all metals, expands and contracts depending on the temperature of the metal, not necessarily the air. The metal must be allowed to move. The thermal expansion coefficient of zinc, 0.022 mm per degree centigrade per meter, which equates to almost 25 mm of movement on a 13 meter panel. It is for this reason that the maximum panel length is 13 meters. The minimum slope as built is 3 degrees, but for steeper roofs, panel length should be reduced. Flashing options with zinc. The photo on the left shows the discrete saddle piece that is used to form an upstand. Hanging gutters and internal boxed gutters are both options, middle and right. Internal box gutters must allow for thermal expansion. Recessed options for roof lights. Brook Green Pavilion, De Rose Saar Architects and a cottage renovation in Yorkshire. Options for roof lights, either standard or recessed. For low slope roofs under 14 degrees, the junctions behind the roof lights must be soldered. The traditional standing seam is not an industrial looking seam. The seams are only 25 millimeters high and five millimeters wide. Single lock is not recommended for roofing. A specialist job with specialist tools. We always recommend recognized installers. Zinc, copper and stainless steel should not be installed by a general builder. A specialist job with specialist tools, including profilers, which transform a coil into a standing seam panel. Most standing seam roofing projects can use 600 mm wide panels. For exposed sites, it may be necessary to use 430 mm wide panels in 0.8 mm thickness. Thicknesses and widths shown are standard, but all coils are 70 mm wider than the center to center of the standing seam panel. Approximate weight of an installed standing seam panel is 7 kg per square meter. Panels are fitted with five one-piece fixed clips at the top and then two-piece sliding clips towards the eaves that allow thermal movement. Installing in this fashion allows standing seam zinc panels to be used in almost all of the world's environments. The minimum slope as built is always 3 degrees. As the zinc expansion rate is 0.022 millimeters per linear meter per degree centigrade, which is slightly 
less than aluminium and slightly more than copper, the eave plate must allow for this movement. With a warm, non-vented barrel roof with a continuous panel, expansion towards both eaves with a fixed point is in the middle. The right flashing must be used for right detail, but sometimes different options are available. The G3 ridge offers a low profile ridge. The photo and detail on the left shows a traditional ridge with an upstand. The photo on the right shows a batten cap hip flashing. Build ups. A cold vented roof must have an air inlet at the base and an air outlet at the ridge, minimum 10 mm open. A 50 mm deep continuous cavity between the back of the substrate and the insulation. A larger cavity is fine, but not a smaller one. Plywood often uses slightly acidic glues, and during damp conditions, these can get trapped between the zinc and the plywood. When a vented plywood deck is fitted, zinc with a 60 micron underside coating should be used. The coating on this zinc protects the backside of the zinc from the non compatible support. Vented open gap softwood boards are the traditional substrate for metal roofing, including zinc. For this substrate, non coated zinc can be used. A non-vented warm roof must have a fully supported continuous aluminium foil bitumen backed vapour barrier, self-sealing. A continuous layer of rigid insulation above the vapour barrier, reducing thermal bridges. In the UK, this means that the roof structure is entirely below the insulation. The structural roof has a BBA certificate and can be used with both PIR and mineral board insulation. Bearing plates and pegs greatly reduce thermal bridges, thus further enhancing the system. The fully supported aluminium foil bitumen backed vapour barrier is below the insulation and the breather membrane above. Engineered panels that combine exterior grade 18mm plywood and PIR insulations can be used as a substrate. Site-made solutions where plywood is laid over insulation, often with gaps, are not acceptable. The use of the correct breather membrane and vapour barrier remain critical. The use of cellular glass vapour closed is the only option for level 5 humidity buildings such as swimming pools and breweries as there are no mechanical fixings that penetrate the insulation. The clips for the standing seam panels are fixed into plates which are sealed into the cellular glass insulation. Insulated metal panels can be used as a substrate. This is a cost-effective warm roof solution for simple large roofs, but the outer skin of the metal panel must be at least 0.7 mm thick galvanized steel. Six roof build-ups are available. Please contact us if you wish to deviate from any of these build-ups. Zinc is a material that will last for decades and looks beautiful, but it is critical to follow the correct roof build-ups. For example, a vented roof that has been filled with insulation is not a warm roof that will function. We've got some more questions coming in uh, on our uh, webinar with Architecture Today. It's a CPD webinar today, Zinc as a Building Envelope, with our content partner, VM Zinc. And Jonathan Lowy is with us to answer any questions you may have. Plenty of them coming in, so let's get to them. Uh, what about waterproofing? Is the cladding itself rainproof, or does the subroof need to be weatherproofed? Uh, on a standing seam panel is uh, weatherproof. I wouldn't say it's waterproof if you actually submerge it. Uh, but the combination of the seam and the correct flashings and that three degree slope mean that the standing seam uh, zinc panel is, is the barrier to the water. You do not need another membrane underneath. On a wall, obviously, we'll see a little bit later, there are more options. Some of them are rain screens as opposed to uh, um, skins that are actually the, the weatherproof skin. But standing seam is most definitely the, the, the weatherproof barrier and there's no need for a, um, a waterproof layer underneath it. We talked about lifespan a little earlier and another question regarding that. After a hundred years, how can the zinc cover be restored? Does it need to be rebuilt? Can zinc indeed be restored? Well, um, what, what, what tends to happen, I do actually have a little piece of Liverpool Central Library uh, in my office 
Uh, so that zinc was is about 100 and um, oh, it's getting on for 150 years old now. What what happens is the zinc does does corrode. Uh, we we saw it's it's about two microns a year, possibly in Liverpool in the 19th century by the coast. Lots and lots of acid rain, coal. It might have been a bit higher, and um, after a number of years, the the zinc starts to really get a bit thinner. Then you get a, a, a wind event uh, and you might get a flashing that, that breaks. Uh, and trying to restore that zinc after 100 years is really, really impossible. What can be done, though, is that zinc can be stripped off and it can be completely recycled. Uh, zinc, zinc is, uh, as we discussed, 100% recyclable. And in Western Europe, it is recycled to about 98%. There's almost nothing that's thrown into landfill or, 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 or not used. So after 100 years, I would recommend a new zinc roof, but the old one can definitely be recycled. Uh, moving on uh, again with lifespan, but how does the uh, lifespan of the range uh, of pigmented zinc um, affect the actual uh, length of time. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. The, the the pigmented zinc, which was which was launched 15 years ago, was not designed to extend lifespan. That that wasn't something we were trying to do. But uh, it is a sort of a byproduct. Uh, it will very slightly last longer than um, a, a weathered zinc or a natural zinc. As I said, it's it's not part. It wasn't part of the, uh, the the design process to try and find a product that would last even longer. We didn't really feel that was necessary. But uh, it, it it would mean that a pigmento roof would last very slightly longer than a natural or or a pre-weathered zinc roof. Probably not by that many years, but maybe an extra ten or twenty years or something like that. Still on the pigmento range, is it suitable in a marine environment? I think we're going to come on to this in the later section, but it's it's a it's a good question. It comes up a lot. Zinc performs extremely well in coastal environments. In fact, uh, some old Victorian piers had some of their buildings uh, covered in zinc because it, it it lasts very very well. the 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 only thing that has to be considered is that if you install zinc uh, in a coastal environment on a non rinse so somewhere where water can't get to, so a soffit, it's likely that you will get some staining. Salt will sort of land on the zinc and encrust into it and it won't wash off. It's not really going to be a corrosion problem, but aesthetically it might not be exactly what you want. And it will be the same thing with pigmento. So pigmento by the sea on a roof, on a, on a wall, works very well. But if you start using it on non-rinse surfaces, staining could be a problem there's several questions about colors ral what's the closest to pigmento gray and are there RAL, ral references for 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 colors do would you like to take those together well we we do we do have uh we pigmento is not uh, a paint as such as, as we've seen so it doesn't match a ral chart uh, what we tell people is that we can it's quite similar to something but it's not an exact match so trying to compare pigmento to paint it that doesn't really work occasionally what happens is that uh, a designer will will try to say right okay i've got a pigmento red wall and i'm going to use something that's actually quite different for the windows and not try to copy it because there'll always be a slight difference so we can certainly give you an indication for pigmento green or pigmento red of the closest row but it is quite important to know that it's it's not paint and it doesn't look like paint so it won't exactly match um so that, that's that's just a design thing we can obviously always send you samples uh, and we can send you lots of uh, lots of photos uh, so you can actually see but trying to match it to an exact row because it's not paint is is quite it was well, not really possible and does zinc become more brittle over the years wondering about workability for possible alterations in the future um zinc won't no it doesn't change its physical characteristics uh, zinc is is actually quite a malleable metal uh, one of the reasons why we'll see later ornaments are made from zinc it's quite easy to to, to fold and to spin uh, so and it, and that wouldn't change obviously if you installed a zinc roof in 2020 and in 
I don't know, 60 years time, 2080, you, you started working on it, it will have lost some of its thickness. It will have slightly corroded. So it won't be quite as strong as it was when it was brand new. The actual physical characteristics of the zinc itself will not change. It's still the same zinc. I mean, zinc's an element. It still has the same tiny amount of titanium and copper in it. So no, it won't change its, uh, its physical characteristics over time. Next, we move to maintenance requirements for zinc surfaces. Uh, the question relates to roofs, walls, cladding. What type of maintenance and, and what kind of frequency? Yeah, good question. Uh, really, very little, which is one of the big advantages of zinc. We, uh, as we only really recommend that you let the rain rain on the zinc. That, that's about it. Where there's no requirement to go up and regularly wash it down with a, with a certain product. There's no uh, requirement to, to physically rub it down. Uh, the rain is the best way of just letting it rinse over the, over the roof or the wall, uh, and that's it. The only thing that's probably worth doing if you've got zinc gutters, but this is nothing to do with zinc, just generally any gutters, is to give them a little bit of a clean out uh, uh, just sort of at the end of the autumn, especially if you're in an area with lots of, lots of trees and, and leaves are getting stuck in the gutters. But the actual zinc itself no need for for any special maintenance requirements an occasional inspection could be could be worthwhile just to make sure everything's okay but certainly no no, no physical maintenance uh, is required at all we've touched on build-ups but this is a very direct question about uh, zinc being used in a warm roof build-up unvented at domestic scale it uh, uh, again a, a very relevant question we um often get asked where is zinc used? Uh, and as we've seen a few examples, we're going to see a few more. That it's used on all scales, so uh, extensions, uh, hospitals, schools, commercial buildings. And the, the, the types of systems can be used on all those projects as well, as can the build-ups. So if you have a domestic extension uh, and you wanted to do a warm roof, there's absolutely no problem with that at all. Uh, it doesn't have to be a cold roof because it's a d domestic extension. The nature of the build-up is really dependent on the design of your building, not the type of the building, uh, apart from a few special situations like swimming pools. But most of the time, you can use any build-up that you want, as long as it's one of the six that we recommend, whether it be for uh, an extension or, 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 a, or a bigger project. The size doesn't really matter. And can zinc be used in an environment adjacent to salt sea air? Will it react with this type of environment? Um, obviously, we, we touched on that a little bit. Absolutely. Zinc by the sea is, works very, very well and has done almost since zinc was first used at the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, we, we, we've got examples and zinc continues to be used by the sea. We will, I, th I think we might see a couple of examples later, but all around the world that uh, we've used zinc in, on, I know there's a, there's a lifeguard station on Bondi Beach in Australia, and there's a, um, a, a golf museum in St. Andrews, Scotland. So yes, it can be used. The only thing to be think about, and it's purely aesthetics, not talking about corrosion, is soffits, non-rinse surfaces by the, within a kilometre of the sea you can get staining on those. But uh, uh, from a corrosion and performance standpoint, zinc roofs and walls by the sea work very, very well. In fact, probably better than almost any other uh, roofing material. Well, finally, in this section of Q&A, uh, before we move on, uh, we talked, uh, you've already touched on cedar boarding being a problem, but somebody mentions, what about leaves and twigs in gutters from nearby trees then? Um, the, the, the issue of, of uh, timber, wood, um, is if you have, for example, an oak tree uh, uh, next to, to a house, uh, and uh, you, you, we're not going to expect you to chop down an oak tree. You probably wouldn't be allowed because it sort of have a, would have a listing. Uh, so the oak tree above a zinc roof, with um, uh, acorns and twigs dropping on it, are not going to create a staining issue. It's really when you've got cut boards which which are uh, 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 green. Um, that's where you're going to have a problem. The nature of twigs and leaves in the gutter are not really a, a, a corrosion 
issue they're more of a um, getting the water down the downpipe issue so obviously if the gutter is stuffed full of leaves uh, it's not going to work and it might overflow um, actual different types of trees uh, around a zinc roof are not a problem the, the problem comes when you when you cut the boards up uh, then it's open and they're green and they can leach out but the actual trees in a in a, a living form is not a problem as long as they're not blocking the gutter obviously We'll have time for more Q&A uh, after the next part, uh, which is coming up now. Facade systems. Roofs can be installed on walls, for example, standing seam, but there are also a wide range of options for wall cladding, ranging from diamond shingles to rain screen cassettes. Standing seam panels will never be completely flat, but using 0.8mm thick zinc and single lock panels 430mm wide will help with this. For installation ease, it is recommended that panels be no more than 4 meters in length. Warm wall construction is possible, but most clients and organizations such as NHBC prefer vented cold wall construction. It should be noted that zinc is non-combustible following EN 13501. Therefore, natural zinc, engraved zinc, pre-weathered zinc are all A1. By applying a coating to the zinc, which is the case with pigmented zinc and or coating to the underside of the zinc, moves the zinc to an A2 classification, but still allows the zinc to be used on all buildings above 18 metres in height. Traditional standing seam wall cladding has been installed over a timber support, but for projects where EN 13501 A1 A2 materials are required, the timber can be replaced with a 0.7mm thick galvanised steel deck. As with all cavities, fire barriers must be used in accordance with B3 and B4 of the current approved document B. The detailing is essentially the same whether the support be timber or galvanised steel deck. Standing seam panels can be vertical but cover flat or curved surfaces. Panels can also be horizontal and of varying width and again flat or curved. Many options exist for flashings but all of these are in zinc. Abbeywood Cross Rail Station, Pimlico School, Panels can be set at an angle and used as a soffit. Retrofit Paris Urban Block and Parsons Tower Project in Newcastle with dark grey and light grey pre-weathered zinc standing seam panels used to renovate an old 1960s educational block. Zinc lends itself well to this use as it is lightweight, flexible and a dry trade. Flat lock panels, sometimes known as shingles, exist in all shapes and sizes. The timber substrate can also be replaced with galvanised steel deck. The profile of the zinc panel itself will not change its fire classification. Rectangular panels, whether horizontally or vertically installed, should be no bigger than 600mm by 3 meters. Kingsland Wharves, Islington, JCMT Architects and Stourbridge College with diamond panels. Bespoke shingle are also possible, as on this project in Canada. Diamond shingles can be used for roofing on slopes above 30 degrees. Brook Street and Bourne Estate. For slightly lower slopes, 15 degrees minimum, preformed stamped tiles can be used for roofing. Every square metre requires nine tiles. Shiplap panels can be installed on cladding rails, metal or timber. The panels must be installed horizontally and have a 200mm coverage width. The panels can be either 13mm or 20mm in depth. A range of standard flashing pieces is available, thus simplifying installation. Interlocking panels are probably the most commonly used rain screen panels in zinc. The panels have a depth of 25 millimetres and joint widths are typically 10 millimetres and 20 millimetres. Interlocking panels have been tested using the CWCT protocol, 2400 pascals serviceability and 3600 pascals safety. Panels can be installed vertically and with a mix of finishes. Panels can be installed horizontally. 
sine wave or corrugated panels are available in all finishes. Standard wave size is 18 mm by 76 mm, one of the few systems with visible fasteners. Both horizontal and vertical installation are possible. Sine wave panels can also be perforated, up to 50% opening depending on the hole size. Project by GPAD Architects with curved and perforated sine wave panels in pre-weathered dark grey zinc. For panels up to 600 mm wide, a cassette panel system is a good option. Maximum panel size is 600 mm by 2400 mm, installed either horizontally or vertically. Panels can be produced up to 900 mm wide, but they will be less flat and resistant to wind loading. Panel sizes and depths can be different as seen here, 40, 60, 80, 100 mm and various sizes. And on the right, an example by Stephen Hodder and Partners, Walter Street, Manchester. Zinc composite consists of two layers of 0.5 mm thick zinc with a 3 mm fire retardant polyethylene core. Zinc composite allows very large panels to remain very flat. The product has a two hour non load bearing fire rating following ASDM E119, a test comparable to BRE 135, which is a National Fire Protection Association 285 that has been passed in the US. The material itself does not have an A2 certification following EN 13501. The zinc composite sheets are routed out and then folded into cassettes. The panels can be cut, thus allowing different shapes to be formed. Flatness. The right system must be chosen. Zinc finish, panel size, joint type, etc. Other systems. After decades of discussion, the new Stonehenge Visitors Centre was finally completed in 2012, following a Denton Corker Marshall design with a zinc composite ceiling, including perforated edges. Rain screens can be used on roofs, but extra engineering is required. In this case, gutters between and under the panels were installed on Trinity Square by Woods Baggett Architects. Zinc rain screens too can be perforated and even be made operable as at the Tower of London Marriott by Bennett's Associates. Zinc gutters have been used since the beginning of the company in 1837 and maybe even before. A range of half round gutters in light and dark pre-weathered zinc with hidden brackets are stocked in the UK. Rectangular and OG gutters are also available. All should be fitted with a minimum fall of 1 in 200. Hidden box gutters can also be used on zinc roofs. These should have falls of 1 in 100, overflows and expansion joints must be included. Internal gutters between roofs and walls must be 200 mm deep, but parapet gutters can be as little as 50 mm deep. PV panels can be fitted to standing seam zinc roofs using aluminium blocks and clamps. This is simple and allows easy replacement at the end of the life of the PV panel. When connecting PV and solar thermal panels directly to the standing seams, care must be taken not to overload the panels with shear forces. We can offer calculations. Zinc has been used as a material to create roof ornaments for almost 200 years. Clapham Bandstand and a bank in Toulouse, as well as complex ornaments and dormers at Poundbury. Zinc is not only very flexible, but also lightweight compared with materials such as stone thus making supporting structures far smaller. Zinc can be perforated with standard patterns, but also complex ones, as well as images. This school in France has a patterned perforated screen. This artist studio on the Isle of Skye has stamped standing seam panels. Zinc is used as a material for interior applications, whether it be an office in Hong Kong or Coventry University. A coating can be applied to the zinc, reducing the effect of fingerprints in areas where the zinc will not be rinsed by rainwater. 
We're discussing zinc as a building envelope on this Architecture Today CPD webinar with VM Zinc. Some more questions coming in, and there's um, plenty of opportunity yet another Q and A session uh, to come after our final part. Uh, but we've got one now. Quick one here is anthra zinc, the dark weathered zinc. So, sorry, I just cut off there. Is uh, Dave is anthra zinc the dark weathered zinc? Yes, yes, it is. An anthra zinc is the dark weathered zinc. So it's 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 the first one that we produced back in 1978. Uh, uh, the, the the objective was to to simulate something that had a looked a little bit like slate, and the uh, anthra is the dark uh, the dark zinc. Yes, indeed. With a ventilated substrate, is it possible to have a seamless finish at the top and side of dormus? Uh, to have well. You, is a, if you've got a ventilated substrate, you we, we do need to create air inlets and air outlets uh, so as to allow the, um, the, the 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 vent to do the just that to vent. That's that's important. Uh, you, now there are flashings where you can you can the vent can continue a, around a corner, but um, at a junction between a wall and a roof, uh, it's you're going to have a change in panels. You can't have a panel wrapping round a roof to a wall uh, in a one continuous panel. So there would be a small flashing. Um, wouldn't be more than a few centimeters, but it, it, you could have the standing seam on the wall, the standing seam on the roof. That's not a problem. And there'd be the same width panel, the same finish, but there would be a very small flashing between the two of them. We can send you photos of, of examples of that if that's something you'd need. Uh, how does zinc perform in a hot, humid climate such as Dubai? Zinc's been used all around the world. Uh, we've done the odd project in the Middle East, not that many. Uh, we've done we've done more uh, in the southern states of the U.S. I know we've 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 been we've done a number of projects in in Texas and Louisiana, which is obviously very hot and very very humid indeed. Um, uh, the added factor in Dubai, uh, I believe, is also sand. So you've got a combination of sandstorms, uh, obviously lots of heat, humidity, salt. The, there are probably some finishes. The zinc itself would work well. That's not a problem. It's the aesthetics. So there are some uh, finishes that are going to work better than others. The, the, the engraved zinc, the azingar, that would work very well. The, the light grey quartz would work very well. The pigmento and anthra might not be the ideal solution for all projects. So the zinc itself, absolutely, but care would be needed on choosing the right finish for the location. Moving on from that, are there any areas, is the next question, that you should not use zinc? Um, I don't think we found any yet. Uh, as far as ge geography, uh, zinc's been used uh, high in the in the Alps, in, at, the, at the top of cable car stations. Uh, it's been used in in right across Canada, uh, where obviously it can get very very cold indeed. It's been used on the lighthouse at the end of the world, uh, which was which Jules Verne based his his novel on, at the bottom of, near um, uh, Cape Horn, where it obviously gets extremely windy. Uh, the, the, the areas where you can't use zinc are flat roofs. You need, it's not a flat roof material, but uh, as far as actual locations, uh, zinc can be used everywhere. As, as the previous question asked, and it's a, it's a good question, some finishes might not be uh, appropriate in all environments, but you would be able to use the uh, zinc uh, in, in pretty much any environment in, in the world. Recycling and sustainability is clearly top of people's minds. How recyclable is zinc? I know we've touched on it, but this goes a bit further. When considering the circular economy, where is it recycled and what's the process for designing that into the pre-construction phase? Well, the, the sort of designing it into the, into the project, that's maybe a little bit more tricky. The, just the answer that zinc is... Obviously, it lasts a long time, which is which is a, a big advantage. But when it does get taken off, it has a value, and uh, materials that have values tend to get recycled. So that's why, whilst it's it's 100% recyclable, 
it's there's about 98 percent that actually is recycled about around just over 20 percent of the zinc that we produce comes from recycled sources so it's it's not all of it uh but a lot of um, uh, zinc, old zinc for roofs, actually then goes into uses such as galvanizing, uh, brass production, and a fair bit into uh, zinc um, oxide, which as we touched on is used in, in skin cream, but also in all sorts of other things, in paints uh, and other industrial processes. Uh, so to, we'd probably the, the actual designing into the process that might be something we might need to look at in a bit more detail but it is m most definitely uh, not a metal that is ever thrown away at the end of its life it is very much um, it, it, it's it's kept circular as it were what is necessary to keep in mind when combining zinc with other materials e.g brick and wood on facades when it comes to behavior in relation to those materials Zinc's obviously there's 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 very few buildings that are completely covered in 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 zinc. Uh, even though I, I I love zinc, I like other materials as well, and I think some of the the best projects we've done uh, done around the world have a combination of building materials. Uh, it, there's there's obviously certain details that have to be done correctly, but that's with with brick and masonry. That's fairly straightforward. That's been done for for the best part of two centuries. And Paris, uh, the, the limestone of Paris has been covered in zinc um, since the early 19th century. Uh, timber, there is the compatibility issue. So if you have a, uh, um, a, a, a red cedar wall with zinc just beneath, then that's that's something we'd have to. There are ways of dealing with it, so a stainless steel gutter, uh, or maybe changing the timber. So that's something we'd need to look at. If you've got two materials side by side, uh, you're unlikely to have a compatibility problem on a wall. Um, so it's it's absolutely possible to detail zinc with with many many materials. Uh, there's really none that it where it's absolutely impossible, other than the compatibility issue the, the best thing is really to look at a specific case and see exactly what the design requires and then we can supply you with an appropriate uh, detail how easy is it to incorporate zinc cladding into an aluminium extrusion system particularly regarding dissimilar material isolation well, you can zinc has been used uh, on, uh, as a spandrel panel in, in, in certain wall cladding systems where you've had aluminium uh, frames. Obviously, zinc and aluminium are completely compatible, so there's no there's no compatibility problem. Um, the the expansion and contraction is not uh, identical. It's not that different, but there there is a slight difference there. So zinc has been incorporated into certain curtain wall type systems. So that 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 is possible. Again, it's it really depends on the exact. Um, nature of the design it's it certainly uh, has been done in the past and is absolutely doable uh, to sort of give a, a precise answer it would be quite tricky but again if if there if you do have details of what you're aiming to do we'd be very happy to look at that and see what would be the best solution how can barrel vault roof work uh, the top will always have a zero degree pitch Yes, absolutely. That's that's true. And I was speaking with a colleague yesterday about this specific uh, issue. Um, if you do a barrel uh, barrel roof on a warm roof, so you don't have a ridge, you have a, a panel that goes eave, ridge, eave, all the way across, no interruptions. It's absolutely true that you have an apex point with zero degrees, but because it's at the ridge, the, the, the water won't just sit there. It will drain off one side or the other. So what we accept, uh, and this is quite specific, and it's a very good question for a barrel roof, is that the, the radius of the roof has to be absolute maximum of 60 meters. If you go over 60 meters, you have an area that's of, of less than three degrees, which is just too big, and there is a risk of water ponding and possibly water ingress. So if it's a continuous barrel, radius uh, less than 60, 60 meters, that's that's doable. Obviously, you mustn't have a ridge in the middle because that will that will sort of act as a dam. So it has to be a warm roof construction with with no ridge cap. 
can we get a copy of the presentation for later reference? Well, I think we're going to make the uh, the actual uh, webinar recording available for folks, um, anybody who wants to to take a look uh, later on. Is there any significant advantage of utilising zinc in relation to certification systems? Any advantage? Well, we have there are certificates for for for, for systems. I mean, we have a we mentioned the. BBA uh, for the warm roof. Um, we talked about the CWCT for, for interlocking panels. Uh, there is a code of practice, a British standard code of practice for traditional systems. So there's a number of, of certificates which are accepting, accepted by building control, NHBC and, 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 and other insurance groups. Um, I'm not sure whether that entirely answers that question, but uh, um, there are, there are, certification is, 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 is available. Um, for a number of systems in zinc, yes. Is there a big cost difference between coated and uncoated zinc? The so the cost of a of a zinc roof or a zinc wall uh, is sort of divided up into three areas. One is the actual the cost of the the zinc. Uh, two is the, the sort of cost of of, of making all the the, the, the panels and the, and the flashings and the clips and the screws and all the rest of it. And then the third bit is, is installing it. So the first, the, the, the last one and the, and the second one really don't vary on the finish. Um, you, you, for installing it, if you're installing a pigmented zinc or a natural zinc, the installation time is exactly the same. When you're making profiling panels, the clips you're using, the screws you're using, all the trim, um, that's all made in the same way, so exactly the same. So it's just the material. So it's one third of the overall price. Now between natural zinc and and um, uh, pigmented zinc, there could be a it could be possibly 25% extra, but it's 25% there's only a third of that so you're sort of coming down to probably less than 10 percent on a supplied and fitted zinc roof um, if you start going with the pigmented zinc so there is there is a difference but it's relatively small what tends to be the most cost effective roof build up using a zinc finish for a warm roof build up well the most common would be uh, installing zinc directly on rigid insulation with uh, the clips and the the, bear, the stainless steel bearing plates, um, the, we call that the structural roof, and there's a BBA certificate for that. That's the most common, and it probably is uh, the most cost-effective. The only uh, the, the exception to that is maybe the insulated metal panels. So uh, fitting standing seam zinc onto insulated metal panels can be very cost-effective, but it, they do work better on large, simple roofs. If you have a fairly small cut-up roof, you lose some of the the uh, economic attraction of that that system. So it's quite often the structural roof zinc directly on rigid insulation. How does zinc compare to lead as an alternative in terms of cost and quality? <sighs> lead, lead, uh, zinc, and copper, and even stainless steel, uh, for, sort of from a a quality. I, don't, I mean, I, I'm, I, I believe there's no real bad products. There, there can be products can be used inappropriately. Um, so there's, there's not really a quality issue. Uh, it's it's more uh, um, an aesthetic issue. Lead is is a is a very soft metal, and for certain things you can you can only do it in lead, and it does have uh, um, an aesthetic attraction. Uh, or a certain look that is you, difficult to get with other materials. But uh, if you want to have a, a rain screen facade, it's pretty much impossible in lead. It just really doesn't work, or you've got a sort of clad timber panels, and the nature of the lead just makes it very, very difficult. So I, I would say it's sort of not so much quality, more aesthetics. Uh, different different uh, lead and zinc will give you a different aesthetic. Sometimes they can be quite similar, but there are there are instances where it's a bit different. Um, from a cost point of view, uh, lead's more expensive. Uh, you need a lot more lead than you do zinc. So if you're going to do a, uh, a, a you know a, a roof in in um, standing seam zinc, uh, if it's 200 square meters and you did the same thing in lead, um, the lead would be a lot more expensive than the zinc. There's no doubt about that. You need a lot more lead. Uh, and the time taken would be more, so it would be considerably more. 
We've just tendered a domestic project with zinc standing seam cladding and roof. Could we send in our details to you to flag up any issues ahead of construction? I would imagine that's a, a quick answer. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes, you absolutely. With with pleasure, please do. Um, I, I think at the end we're going to um, put up contact details. Obviously, yes. uh, if you don't have our contact deals, details, uh, vmzinc.co.uk, uh, there's all the information there. Um, uh, but absolutely, yes, we, we're very happy to look at um, drawings um, to answer questions. Uh, so please do. Another quick one on lead. Is zinc roofing compatible with lead used as a flashing material? Yes. Zinc and lead are fine together. As with all uh, lead, uh, it's generally recommended that you use patination oil on lead. Sometimes you get sort of a, is it, we talked about white rust earlier. Zinc and lead are actually, the chemistry is quite similar. And you can sort of get a whitish staining on lead if you don't put patination oil on it. And that staining can sometimes run over the zinc. Not really very uh, aggressive from a corrosion standpoint, but aesthetically it can sort of leave some sort of milky stains. So lead and zinc, yes, fine. But we would recommend that patination oil is applied to the lead. Can unvented system zinc be laid direct on plywood substrate, which is directly laid on partial insulation on top of and between rafters or wall? On a roof, no. We, we don't recommend um, uh, laying uh, plywood on top of um, uh, insulation. Uh, there's, it's something that, that hides gaps in the insulation. If you're going to do a warm roof, you need a, a continuous support on top of your rafters where you put a vapor barrier, an aluminium foil uh, bitumen back vapor barrier, which is continuous, then the insulation, and then the zinc goes on top of that with a breather membrane in between. We don't recommend putting plywood, loose laying plywood basically um, on top of the insulation. Engineered panels can be used, that's an alternative, which would replace the, um, the, the, the bearing plates and the rigid insulation, that's a possibility, but plywood just installed on insulation on a roof, definitely we would not recommend that. On a wall, um, it, you can probably, things are a little bit easier on a wall because you don't have quite the same vapor drive and uh, you've got gravity working with you. So if you do get moisture, certainly if it's a small dormer cheek, it's gonna be very little and it's gonna drain out. So in a wall, it's possible uh, as a standard build-up, not recommended, but if you're doing a dormer cheek, putting plywood um, uh, over um, uh, timber supports with insulation between, if it's sort of a one square metre dormer cheek, that would be acceptable. Final question in this batch then, if you want an internal gutter, do you need to maintain the roof substructure makeup all around that gutter and do you have working details? Um, yes and yes. Uh, if you're doing an internal gutter, you, you, the, the, the build-up doesn't change underneath the gutter. You can't, uh, you need to insulate underneath the gutter. If you don't, you'll have a thermal bridge, uh, you'll cold bridging and you'll get condensation and you'll get all sorts of problems. So you do need to, um, uh, in, you need to have the same build-up. Now it could be a warm roof where it's insulated or it could be a cold roof where you've got an air, uh, an air cavity and um, you, you, you vent underneath the gutter. But the principle uh, remains the same whether it be for an internal gutter or the main roof and and we can supply you with details showing that there's a final uh, q a uh, briefly available to us so if you do have any burning questions then flick a question to us in the q a and we'll deal with it in a couple of minutes time performance the company is iso 9001 and iso 14001 registered Zinc also has a BRE Environmental Product Declaration EN15804, which, amongst other things, indicates a lifespan of 100 years with full recyclability. Bondi Beach Surf Lifeguard Pavilion and British Golf Museum St Andrews. Unlike some other metals, bare zinc can be used in coastal environments without salt corroding the surface of the zinc to any severe effect at all. Other than regular cleaning of gutters, zinc roofing and cladding panels do not require maintenance. The rinsing effect of rainwater is quite sufficient for the zinc panels to be cleaned. 
as pre-weathered dark grey zinc is just that, dark grey, stains tend to stand out a little more easily. Any salt staining is purely cosmetic and will not severely affect the integrity of the zinc. Coated zinc consists of pre-weathered zinc with an organic coating that creates a far smoother surface. The smoothness of this material results in particles not being able to stick to its surface to the same extent as pre-weathered zinc. This smoothness also facilitates cleaning. Zinc soffits unrinsed within one kilometer of the sea are very likely to show some form of staining. Not an exhaustive list, but some of the more common incompatible products. House 19 by Jestico and Wiles. Shortlisted for on Grand Design's Reba House of the Year uses zinc and wood. Not an issue here because there is no runoff from wood to zinc. Zinc to wood runoff is not a problem. Various panels have been tested to CWCT protocol. Serviceability 2,400 pascals and safety 3,600 pascals. Building completed in May 2003. Only minor damage was slight bulging due to pressure. Another church building showing the blown out windows and ripped off single ply roof, but zinc intact. Winds in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina reached 140 miles per hour. Price dependent on size, complexity and location. Most products are stocked in the UK and Ireland and therefore rapidly available up to six weeks lead time for non-standard products. VM Zinc service offer. It is critical that standing seam roofing and cladding is installed by a competent hard metal contractor. Good design and good products need highly skilled installers. VM Zinc at work partners do have a track record of successfully installing zinc roofs and walls. They also know and understand our recommendations following training. As with all materials, health and safety regulations must be followed, such as construction design and management regulations. It is critical for individuals to follow regulations through correct attitude and applying personal safety. All risks must be assessed, PPE must be used, correct lifting and handling is always required, and working at height needs to be carefully assessed. Thank you for watching. Time for some final closing Q and A in the next few minutes. Um, various questions coming in on uh, following on the maintenance side of thing, and some specific um, uh, questions relating to cleaning. So here's the first of those: um, cleaning zinc. Is it wise to remove seagull droppings? Uh, there was another one about bird droppings, and there was also one associated uh, with render spits. Uh, so the old other uh, trades question: um, what, what um, you could perhaps deal with all of those in. <laughs> In, in yeah, uh, we, we do have uh, we do have problems with seagulls, uh, as we've seen quite a few times. Zinc zinc works well by the coast, and therefore, where there's you know by the sea, you, you get seagulls. Um, the, the, the 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 guano, which I think is the technical term, um, is, is not going to uh, do anything. It's not going to make a hole in the zinc. Uh, it's possibly it, it's it's quite it is quite toxic stuff. So it can stain uh, the surface of the zinc. So it's not going to do anything worse than staining it. So if you did leave it there, um, you might get some sort of stain. Uh, obviously, if you can put some sort of bird protection on a ridge to stop the uh, the birds sort of perching there and doing their business there that's probably going to help if it's just birds flying around um dropping randomly over the zinc roof uh, i would say that the rainwater is going to deal with most of that it's sort of big lumps where there's there's a sort of perching problem and maybe that could be dealt with by by the anti-bird um products that exist that could be attached to to to, to ridge caps so it's more aesthetics than than a real corrosion issue uh, as far as other trades, uh, all of our pre-weathered zincs are supplied with a, a, a protective film. And we recommend, where possible, that protective film be left on uh, if any other trades are working in the vicinity. And that, that can be left on for uh, two months after the zinc's been installed. Uh, 
and uh, as long as you you do that the you're, you're going to protect the zinc quite a lot you don't want to partially remove the film that's not a good idea it's sort of either on or off but if there are other trades going on um, the film is the best way of dealing with that obviously if if uh, a zinc facade gets speckled with render or cement uh, it's not going to look great. So the film is the best solution for that. Should zinc roofing or cladding be used in a heavily wooded environment where there's likely to be tree resin and other deposits around? Um, we, we've done, we've done uh, uh, projects in, in, in areas where there's lots of trees. As, 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 uh, as, as Dave mentioned, I, I spent some time in other countries, including in the US, and I lived in a... In, best described as a wood and had a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of zinc on my house and it's it's really not a problem obviously if you have some sort of tree where you're literally getting sort of sap dripping out of it um then um that possibly potentially could be an issue but it would be a, a, a very special uh, exception so most of the time most of the time, the biggest issue with with, with um, roofs in wooded areas is gutters getting blocked, which isn't particularly a zinc issue. That's just you need to, you do need to clean out your gutters if you live uh, in a wood. Moving on to um, square and diamond tiles, what substrate do you fix the, them to? Is there a non-combustible alternative to plywood? Uh, we can you can use shingles, diamond squares onto galvanised uh, steel deck. We we, we did a, a project we showed earlier, a, a school, um, no, sorry, not school, a hospital up in Glasgow that was done a few, quite a few years ago, before Grenfell actually, uh, where uh, diamond, not diamond, rectangular shingles were fitted to a, a galvanised steel deck. So that the best substitute for plywood or, or open gap boarding uh, when fire issues or a concern is to use a galvanized steel deck okay and moving on now it is some more here just a few more minutes of questions ah oh, you've mentioned uh, clearly zinc requires a skilled trade contractor to install do you have a list of preferred zinc cladding and roofing trade contractors yes we, we, we do. Uh, it is very important, certainly for standing seam roofing and cladding, that it's installed by a uh, the, the right installer. It's not a general building trade. We have a, a recognised list across the, the UK and Ireland. There are about 110 or 120 now maybe installers, companies that regular fit what they call hard metal. So not meaning lead so zinc copper stainless steel um, and th those installers um, we would recommend we also have a, a vm zinc at work partner program where installers follow we, we follow we give them training uh, we, we we explain exactly all our recommendations so we have a, um, a slightly closer partnership with those companies and there's almost 60 of those across the um the country and um they they can they give 30-year warranties on the uh, on the metal as well so uh yes that that we we can give details of contractors uh, around the uk and ireland absolutely do you have a selection of drawn standard details available for both facades and roofs we do we have um we have drawings we have a, a, a drawings that you can download online both um, AutoCAD and uh, PDF uh, in the roofing systems and the wall cladding systems. We also have BIM models if that's necessary. Uh, we work with MBS and we've got BIM models. We do have a, a more extensive library of uh, CAD drawings. Uh, not all of them are online. So if you do have something specific that you can't find online, we'd be happy to uh, send that to you. Or if you just want us to send you a, a, a zip package of drawings, we'd be happy to do that as well. So um, uh, please feel uh, free to, to drop us a line, uh, an email or a um, uh, telephone uh, to ask for that and we can send that out to you. Um, or there is the, uh, the, the option of, of going online and downloading it, but both are fine. 
we have some contact details. We'll run through those uh, just at the end of the presentation, but a few more minutes of questions. Can PV panels be set vertically between standing seams rather than across the tops to keep a flatter finish? We are, the, 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 you, can, you, you can basically adhere or glue PV panels to standing seams. Uh, that's, that has been done in the past. Uh, the, uh, the the obvious the, the issue there is it has to be done in the right way because you're often adhering something in situ. So it, it has it has been done. I would say that the clamped option is far more common, uh, but the, the the gluing issue is a possible is a possibility. But we we do need to carefully look at the logistics of being able to do that in situ correctly gluing obviously requires um, a certain temperature, a certain humidity, no dust. And when that's done correctly, it works very well. After all, we, we, um, we, cars are glued together and planes are glued together. But when it's done in situ on a building site, a lot more care needs to be done. So yes, it's possible, but logistically it is a little bit more tricky than the clamp-on system, which, which is a lot more simpler and probably more cost-effective as well. With the perforated system, regarding having more ornate images, do you have a minimum gap between each perforation to retain the strength, or can you have allowances to obtain the image that you want? Um, you, obviously, you don't want to turn it into an old-fashioned stamp where you sort of rip, rip the zinc. Uh, that, that's important. So the, there needs to be a certain... We, we talk about 50% open area really been a maximum going over 50 percent unless you've got very very big holes that gets difficult um, we can what we can do and we have done is we've pixelated images so we can we can take uh, just a straightforward image that, that you might have a logo uh, um, a photo anything and then we can turn that into a, um, a pixelated image and produce that on a sheet of zinc by varying obviously the whole density but also the whole uh, diameter. Uh, so that's quite a neat way of, of, of creating a, an image. Uh, but we do need to make sure we, we, we keep enough zinc in there so it doesn't fall apart. But the 50% the, the is about the, the cutoff. So if you go more than 50%, it starts getting really difficult. But if you leave at least 50% of it as zinc, uh, it works pretty well. Is there an alternative to the captain standing seams panel joints, e.g. a flattened welted seam that allows one section of pitched roof to transition into another, say a crossfall? You can do a, a, a welted joint because if you have a, a panel, a standing seam panel, you need to join two panels. We have a, 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 what's called a double welted joint which has a soldered plate and then it hooks together. Um, that can only be done at above 14 degrees. So it's, it's, not, um, it's not as weather tight as the standing seam or the batten cap. You can also do flat lock panels, diamonds, but that would require 30 degrees. The, the advantage of the standing seam and the batten cap is because you have the upstands, it allows you go, to go down to a much lower slope. So uh, it is possible, absolutely, but you increase the slope. There's the, the tile, the stamp tile, which is actually called an attica that we saw uh, in the presentation, uh, and that has raised edges, allowing you to go down to 15 degrees as a minimum. So there are options, um, but they can't go down to quite such a low slope as standing seam and batten cap. Got another question on PV panels uh, and zinc roofs. Can PVs be integrated within the standing seam panels? i.e. nearly within the panel width for a more discreet aesthetic? I, th I think that's probably what, what we were talking about earlier. So, so having them adhered to the, to the zinc, um, which, uh, and the answer is yes, but it, logistically it's a lot, a lot trickier. It has been done on the, uh, in the past, uh, the, but the clamp-on systems are far more, more common, more cost-effective, easier, does have the advantage of uh, of being able to you, you can replace it your your zinc roof as we've we've seen a few times uh, uh, should last you decades uh, maybe over a hundred years um, I, I would I wouldn't like to even imagine what PV technology is going to be like in twenty years 
it's undoubtedly going to be very different today. So there might be a need to replace that, which obviously by adhering to the zinc gets a little bit more difficult. But aesthetically, there's no doubt that it is very, very elegant. So it is possible, but logistics have to be, have to be looked at carefully. How do you ventilate the rear of the zinc standing seam cladding if you have, for instance, a 50 metre high facade where there are no windows and you're using a steel decking? Um, got to be honest, haven't that's it's probably a, haven't come across that that project yet. Um, uh, there's there's we we would probably 50 meters um, is probably too far to go from from without any ventilation um, on a vertical wall. I would say you could probably you could probably go up to 20 meters, uh, and then you might have to have a uh, a flashing which allows air inlet and air outlet, which could also act as an additional fire barrier. 50 meters in one run, even on a wall, without any interruption is probably going to be just a little bit too much. Um, so you might have to have uh, a couple of intermediate horizontal flashings to allow air in and out. Is there actually any incompatibility between single ply and zinc? We've had a project where zinc outlets were specified out of single ply roof and there was difficulty there was difficulty in connecting the two materials together. There's all sorts of um, uh, sort of old fashioned bituminous felt is, is, is not going to be very compatible because it has organic acids that leach out, especially when they, they, they put in the sun with, with uh, um, uh, UV light. But there's lots of membranes now that exist that, that are compatible with zinc. So the compatibility isn't really the problem. Uh, the bigger issue is making sure how do you connect the, the outlets. Now, often um, membranes are sort of stuck, stuck down and sticking it onto a metal, whether it be zinc or, or anything else, is sometimes quite tricky. So it's not really a compatibility problem. It's more making sure that your membrane can stick to the, to the metal outlet pipe in a, in a, uh, a durable, robust, weather-type way. Uh, that's probably the, the, the biggest issue. So if you do have a, a downstand, that solves that problem. A few more minutes of some closing questions, and there's plenty of them there. Any temperature recommendation for installing zinc? Uh, yeah, that's a very, very good question. Uh, zinc, like all metal, is cold brittle. Some metals are more cold brittle than others. Uh, zinc, uh, the actual metal, should not be folded or worked at uh, less than uh, 7 degrees centigrade so you could you can you can take a, a standing seam panel and put it on a roof um, um, and I've actually seen in Montreal in Canada people working at minus 15 I don't think that would happen in the UK but obviously in, in, in the, the, the Canadian winter that you get a lot of cold weather and they made the panels inside a heated building took the panels out put them on the wall crimped a couple of seams whilst the, the, the metal still had um, a bit of temperature in it and and then moved on so the, the the folding of the metal uh, at seven degrees for the for the pigmento finish we recommend that at ten degrees because it has the the surface on it it's slightly more susceptible so that should be a little bit more. Um, uh, it's you can have crimping machines that basically have the equivalent of a hairdryer on the front, which slightly heat up the metal, uh, which which allows it to be worked. But the actual metal, the it, you shouldn't be folding it at less than plus seven degrees centigrade. Um, with a greater drive towards the use of products that have lower embodied carbon in them, how does zinc compare with other metals? Um, the, well, the, 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 I suppose one of the big differences, metals generally are quite good because they're recycled. So you, you, you sort of get a, you get a credit because they, 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 they last a long time and they're recycled. Zinc specifically, when you're, when you're producing new zinc, the advantage of, of uh, virgin zinc is that it's produced at room temperature. So it's an e electrolysis process, which does require electricity, obviously. Um, in, uh, in depending on the country, that electricity source could be from oil, coal, nuclear power. But if you're, if you're producing aluminium, and you're producing virgin aluminium, you have to heat up the electrolysis, the soup, as it were, to a much higher temperature. So you need a lot more electricity. So uh, the, the, the amount of embodied energy in zinc, in new 
zinc is actually quite a lot less than both aluminium and copper, for example. Um, it's nearly time for us to close, but I'll just ask this final one. Uh, can I ask if you do any practical hands-on training or courses for architects and professionals? We, we have done in the past. We've done hands-on uh, training sessions, obviously, for installers. We do do that. And occasionally, uh, we do get architects interested in, 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 in using some of the tools, folding it, and sort of getting a real feel for how the metal's used, which obviously often helps in design. So it, it's not something that we, um, we do regularly. We, we do more of the installer training. Um, there's no real reason why an architect wouldn't be able to come along to an installer's training, uh, but it's also something that we might look to do in the future. Um, uh, offering, as uh, so we have done it, we, well, I remember doing organising a session once in the US, and it was it was very well received. Um, uh, architects sort of got to feel and play with the metal, um, uh, so we have done that in the past. Um, if there is a, a requirement to do more of a hands-on CPD. Um, yes, I, I would suggest again, it's probably something to maybe contact us about and see what we could organize. The current situation makes things a bit more difficult, but hopefully um, things are going to improve um, a little bit later in the year, but obviously we don't entirely know. Brings us neatly to the contact details. 02034455640 is the telephone number to get in touch with VM Zinc. Uh, there is an email address for specific inquiries, vmzinc.uk at vmbuildingsolutions.com and the website is vmzinc.co.uk. Jonathan Lowy, thank you very much indeed for being with us to answer all of those many questions. And I'm sorry if we didn't get to yours. There was an abundance and a quite a late flurry. But thank you for joining us for this Architecture Today CPD webinar, Zinc as a Building Envelope, with our content partner, VM Zinc.